I've been in the canyon all afternoon. I didn't climb. I sat on the top all alone. The first time alone, I didn't want to climb, so wore high-heeled slippers, knowing it would keep me from it. That was the only way to keep me from it. It was a wonderful, warm, quiet day. The color, lavender and pink and red and blue, made dirty in places by millions of little scrubby cedars, never more than 10 or 12 feet high. I almost cooked, half asleep in the sun, but the shadows of the little scrubby trees were cold. The sunset was a long, warm glow. It seems to hate to leave this country. Good night. It is a very still night. Uh, Mrs. McCabe, the main purpose of our conversation here is to get your memories of the great artist Georgia O'Keeffe when she was a teacher at West Texas State Normal School College in 1916 and 1918. You had a course under Miss O'Keeffe? Yes, I did. Just over a century ago, before she became a world-renowned painter, Georgia O'Keeffe taught art classes, first in Amarillo Public Schools from 1912 to 1914, then in nearby Canyon, Texas, at what's now West Texas A&M University. There, she fell in love with the landscape of the American West. There, she created her unique artistic aesthetic, a balance of nature and abstract modernism. O'Keeffe drew inspiration from the raw majesty of the Palo Duro Canyon, from the enchanting prairie hues at dusk and dawn, and from helping her students see the beauty in objects all around them. She would talk about art and seeing something in everything so you look at. Everything, if right? it was a rock or a stick or a cactus growing, a bare grass, she'd stop and point it out. We listen. Well, now we learn from her. Though O'Keefe is a legend in the panhandle and her work is exhibited at museums throughout Texas, her years in this state had been underappreciated in the broader art world. That has changed thanks to the recent scholarship of West Texas A&M art professor Amy Von Lintel. She lived or resided in Texas on the ground here maybe 37 months out of her 98 years. She was incredibly nomadic. But we have a huge and beautiful and very foundational body of work from 1916 to 18 when she was on the ground here in Canyon and when she was teaching at this very institution. In 2016, Von Lintel collaborated on a catalog of the artist's 46 watercolors from her panhandle years. In 2020, she authored Georgia O'Keeffe's Wartime Texas Letters, a study of the artist's private correspondence that sheds light on her creative process and influences. O'Keeffe has a style all her own. In such phrases as, I feel like shaking all the world off my fingers this afternoon like water. I'm not trying to do art, I'm digging stars. In these phrases, we discover an author who is as creatively precise and lovely with words as with colors and shapes on paper or canvas. West Texas A&M is home to the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum. A jewel of its permanent collection is Red Landscape, an O'Keeffe oil inspired by the Palo Duro Canyon. It is the centerpiece of a 2023 exhibit on canyon-inspired art called On the Edge of the Plains. If you've been in the canyon for more than about five minutes, the light's gonna be different. The seasons change tremendously from one point of the year to another. The colors shift depending on how much moisture there's been or if it was windy and dry yesterday. It's just a really beautiful, transformative, transforming place. When I envision O'Keeffe like approaching the rim of Paladero Canyon and seeing this kind of vast, torn open landscape that is, you know, full of mystery and wonder. I think that the wild nature of the canyon stuck with her. 
The Amarillo Museum of Art is home to four O'Keeffe watercolors. Three are studies of her roof with snow, which she based on a house across the street from her upstairs bedroom. The fourth is train coming into Canyon, Texas, which she based on a view from her campus office window. One thing in particular about O'Keeffe's watercolors is that they're really distilled. There's a combination of both her controlling the form that she's looking at and interpreting that form, but she's not trying to capture a train as a train. There's a freedom of color, but there's also this kind of constraint. And I think the same could be said for the roof with snow. So when you see the roof with snow, it's pink and blue and it's enveloping this roof line. She's taken the architecture of that place and kind of reduced its form so that compositionally it's beautiful. It's so interesting. The work that she does here, she kept in her private collection for her life because I think it was so foundational for the way she thought about art. Not only for her kind of Western aesthetic, but also for her balance of nature, inspiration, and abstraction. She starts that here. WT is established as a normal college in 1910. It's a pretty conservative place. It's in a small town. Young women are encouraged, you know, go find a church. Don't go maybe riding in cars with boys. And she does those things, right? She dresses unconventionally. Some people say she dresses almost like a man. Young ladies there in the class thought she was about the queerest dressed person we ever saw. Our mothers didn't dress that way. This is right before World War I, and she stands out a little bit by saying, you know, we, maybe we shouldn't be involved in this war. And so definitely she's, she's a bit at odds with the kind of prevailing opinion in a place like Canyon. Boys leaving school and going to war, the best ones it seems. It's like sending the cattle to market. All these other fellows, like, oh, the ones that make me hate all the men in the world, they don't think about going to war. They will still be here with cars and their despicable selves. It's only the nice youngsters that go. She was um, trying to get involved in the community and, you know, having a presence here and getting familiar with the lay of the land, literally. So she spent a lot of time walking. The light on the plains is a fascinating thing. So when you have all this atmospheric dust and this ability to see in 360 degrees, you get a really vibrant, rich color both morning and then also dusk and sunset uh, really brings color, the color surrounding you in the sky. When you go to the canyon, there really isn't red. It's orange, it's terracotta, it's all these different colors, but why red? She was fascinated with red here and compares the red to a feeling she gets in the landscape, but also a feeling she gets about the people and she likes people who she feels like have a lot of red blood, red blood cells. She's not mirroring the color she sees, she's painting the color she wants. 